I have something to say. Speak. It's over here. Oh, okay. We just got this. Well, it's can not ours, we just picked it up. Can I show him? Yes. Boom. Pretty sexy. Big yellow tractor. But now we have this problem. We have this entire water system that we've been planning for like three or four months. And with this thing, we're pretty much gonna install it and backfill everything in like two days. And we still haven't told you about the system. So we're gonna attempt to do that real quick before it's gone and there's nothing to show. Because we live in a very cold climate, we're going to be relying on these uh, frost-free hydrants for the majority of our system. We're actually going to be doing a completely different video on those because they turned out to be an insane amount of drama, which oh was God. totally not worth it and created all kinds of fiscal anxiety. Uh, so we're going to work on those later. Uh, but first, let's talk briefly about this pipe, which is double encasing. So if you haven't seen our trenching video, give that one a watch. That one was a nightmare. We'll link to it over here. Because this trench that we've got on the side of this hill, which enables us to have this gravity fed system, was ridiculously difficult and our soil is mostly rock, we have decided to set double encasing in this trench. That way, God forbid we ever have to deal with this system. In theory, we can simply pull in a completely new piece of pipe. For our main water lines, we've actually chosen to go with poly, which is a highly rated uh, underground or burial line. A lot of folks use PVC or there are other variations of poly. This stuff is ridiculously strong. We're going to be using two inch for our main uh, drain line. There's a real simple reason for that. One, when you're using gravity feed, flow is your friend, not pressure. So two inch will allow us a ridiculous amount of flow. Plus, hello, it makes sense to be able to fight fire. If it happens, we do live on a rural property and we really don't want to rely on someone else having to put out a quick fire for us. So we figure that's a really good thing to design into our system. Yeah, and down the road, we don't ever expect to do that, but we're gonna show you a component that's as critical to the system as this pipe that makes the whole fire prevention thing happen. And you might think, we're crazy, but guess what happened? Like the day before we were gonna to move to our property. Our property was on fire. We actually found out like a month later. Someone's like, oh yeah, I put out a fire on your property. We're like, when? Right. And they're like, oh, like the week before you moved here. I like, go, oh, cool, that's awesome. Somebody had thrown a cigarette butt out yep. the window and it was a super dry summer and apparently our property caught on fire. So if you think fire's a little ridiculous, don't. Yep. So this is our main line coming down here and the trench continues up along the hillside and then we've got our cisterns over here. We'll actually talk about those in just a moment. We do have a, a separate video on those. Um, we'll actually link to that over here, I think. Um, so give that one a watch. We actually have a video on our plumbing parts too. If you're curious about the poly and the fittings and everything, give that video a watch. There's a lot of really great tips in there. So down here at the bottom of the hill is gonna be where our junctions are gonna go. And we're actually gonna terminate the line here because our goal is to build our house right here. So we're gonna terminate the line and eventually we'll end up connecting the house in there but for now we're actually going to go this way out to the garden and put a frost free hydrant let me back up we're actually going to be putting a frost free hydrant up here at the garden also because we like to have water available for this and other activities here and then we actually have a hydrant hi so we actually have a frost free hydrant in the rv the reason we're doing that is we don't really know if we're going to get this system in this year we are trying to get it in this weekend and we're trying to not be living there this winter that said plan for the worst plan for, for the, the worst we're going to do all this work and we're not going to have this frozen water system that we had uh, last winter but we're going to put a valve so that we can turn that system off in the future and then end up removing that hydrant because this is all going to be driveway driveway area in the future what you reading this is a book on water storage. I think one of our subscribers, maybe a year ago, sent this book to us. Yeah. And we just, we didn't realize how critical it would be to the design of our system. And there's a lot more we have yet to talk about, but we basically use this book, read it somewhat cover to cover, at least the parts that really applied to us to design our system. And there was a lot of stuff that we didn't really think about, little intricacies of your system design. I don't know if we'll go into all those in this video. Probably not in this video, but it definitely influenced our design because yep. this book talks a lot about gravity fed systems yes. and primitive systems. And why a lot of cisterns fail or systems like this, what are their downfalls and what do people not plan for? And yep. I would say if someone just went at it 
using common sense, they might not know all these things. Well, there's a lot of just little nuances like sloping things to get rid of sediment in your cisterns. Yep. I'll say this, this system when we're done will run us almost $10,000. And I think this book is under 20, maybe 25. Yep. So it's a very small price to pay if you're designing your own system to read this book carefully. Yep. Okay, let's talk a little bit about plumbing components. So for a two inch main line, if you wanted to, you could spend a second mortgage getting components for your system. But we did a little bit of research and we found that there is a very good alternative to brass. Did you say my brass looks big? Do what? Did you say my brass looks big? Don't talk about your brass on camera. <laughs> The fitting alternative that we found are these extremely sturdy poly fittings. They're compression fittings, which means they're not permanent and they can be either removed or modified at a later date. This component, a com or coupler, if you were to buy this in brass, I think this is probably around 35 or $40. This same component in brass would probably run you twice that much or maybe even three times. What I love about this system is that there are components that you cannot get in brass. For example, that's not one of them. Let's see, here it is. This is a T. In order to do this with brass, you'd have to have a male connector, a male connector, and a T and then another male connector. So that means you'd have four pieces of brass to create this one connection. And I think this was probably in the $60 range. To do that in brass would probably run you 300 bucks. They also offer valve systems. This is a two inch mainline full flow ball valve and it is serial numbered and everything. So these are lifetime valves. Brass is not the only option when it comes to building these large mainline systems. This is a fire hydrant. It is a two inch uh, frost free blow off hydrant. It's not my idea of a fire hydrant. I always thought they're like those red things that dogs pee on. Like it doesn't look like that at all. At least it's red, but I don't think your dog's gonna pee on it. Um, and it's heavy. It's really heavy. Ugh. Especially when you get a flat on the way home and your tire is hiding under the fire hydrant. Not that uh, that happened. Not that that happened an hour ago. So this is made by Kupferly, which is a foundry. And the reason you would want this over what's called a stop and waste, which is a valve that when you turn it off, it drains the standpipe in front of it. The reason this is better is because the whole entire hydrant oh, can be serviced from above ground. This is a lockable service cap. Remove this cap and you can pull the entire valve out above ground. No digging. Digging sucks. So once this is buried, it's all frost free. The water stays at the bottom. And then if you ever have to service it, you can service it above ground. This little guy will set you back just $670. These are cannons. Pew, 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 pew. This is called a curb box. And what you do is you put the valve down here in the ground. Let me demonstrate. So imagine this is three feet under the ground. Your plumbing goes through here and your valve sticks up here. Now from above ground, you remove this cap, boink, boink, boink. You reach down in here with a wrench and now you can turn the valve on. Uh, these were only $40, right? Right? That's ridiculous because a piece of pipe to do this is like not nine or 10. Yeah, it this even says is... water on top of it. Just in case you're confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's a there's a special key for this. I so think that... we should cross out the W and put an H. Hater. Haters. So there's a special key for this. Um, why cast iron? Because if, if you put one of these valve boxes or curb boxes <laughs> somewhere where Alyssa, I mean, let's say Jesse drives the backhoe over there. Let's be honest here. Jesse's careless with the backhoe because yeah. he's in a mood and he wants to get a bunch of work done and he drives his backhoe over your valve box and this is made out of PVC. Rest in peace valve box. This sucker, cast iron. So drive your four wheeler, drive your backhoe, whatever you want to drive over it, you're not going to do any damage. Hold on, Dudes. we need to make a featured image. Wait. Uh huh. Turn 180 degrees and turn that this way. This way? So they can read water. <laughs> now I have to get close and make this in focus. That's pretty good. 
make it a stupid face that gets clicks. Okay, we'll use one of those. This is for people who have very large turds. This might fit an elephant turd. This is a six inch sewer oh. pipe. Do you know bugaboo is about the size of an elephant turd? <laughs> so this yeah. is the solution to the valve at the cistern. Hold on, I'm still backing up. It's Keep not in the frame up. yet. Backing up, back. Wow, up, back that's up. tall. Thank you. The valve on our cistern is a measly eight feet underground. Not very far. So we have to get this down there so that we can reach the valve, the main shutoff at the cisterns. So this guy is gonna do that for us. And then we've got a cap on the top. Doo -doo 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 -doo. That was the best 26 bucks we'll spend on the entire project. Right, this is caution water line buried below tape. I don't really think we're gonna need this, especially since on that hill, it's not like you're digging with an excavator. You're like shoveling an inch at a time. True. But it's good insurance. Yeah. And I feel like if we ever sell the property, to say that we have caution water line buried below tape will make people feel like we really cared. So <laughs> Which we do. That is metallic. So it can be detected with a metal huh? detector. Well, I thought that's what this is for. This is different. Oh, this is heavy. heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy. So this is tracer wire. And what you do is you leave one piece of this out of the ground on each end and the utility company will clip onto that and they can trace this wire. So if somebody like your grandkids or your great grandkids or something Whatever else. Whatever sap suckers are gonna have to fix this when we're gone. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> they can find it using this wire. Why would we put both in there? What do you think? You can't see this when you're digging with a backhoe. You'd be like, what's that? And Not then you just that keep this digging. is that much better, but it's a little better. But at least it's shiny. So this was 26 bucks and this was 55 bucks. So 75 bucks, like that's, that's pretty good. To protect the $10,000 system. I think $10, the hard part system. is that all these things, it's like 50 bucks, 75, 100, 475, and it just quickly adds up. Yeah, these over here, don't even ask how expensive these were. Uh-oh, which one are you in? This one. <laughs> I'm in the top one. <laughs> so these I think were 330 a piece, 300 a piece. Something like that. This is how we're gonna backfill the trench. So how much vertical head do we have? 70 feet, except we dropped the cisterns about eight feet, which means we lost just a little bit of pressure. And then where our house is gonna go right here, it's probably gonna be about 12 feet up to the living level, which means we're gonna lose another 12 feet of vertical. So we're gonna lose a little bit, maybe like around six PSI of water pressure, but we're trying to maintain big pipe sizes so that we don't lose any flow. Should we tell them how we get water in the cisterns? I know everyone's thinking that. They're like, how do you get water in the cisterns? It doesn't make any sense. Kind of like how we are now, but we have a huge IBC container, which, which is holds about 250 gallons. Hiding over there. And sure, it's a 2000 gallon system. So the first day we fill it up, it'll take a bit. And then we'll probably have a water run maybe once every three months or so. Two or three months. Um, and yep. supposedly it's gonna be really easy to just hook into the water line and send it up the hill with our water pump. So this pump is actually a shallow well pump from Wayne. And we actually uh, upgraded this. We were using a utility transfer pump and now we're using this guy. And we can transfer about 300 gallons in about 15 minutes to the top of the hill. The reason pumping to the top of the hill makes sense is that we use a generator for our power. And so on-demand pumping is the best way to go because we can pump until we're done and then gravity brings it down when we need it. And that system has been working really well for us for over a year. And I can't see why that's gonna change. And how much does that water cost us? Couple bucks. Yep. So that's right now. Down the road, a well is in the plans, but it is not a priority. I wanna say this because a lot of people have this question in every mm -hmm. video. All is said and done, if this system costs us $10,000, do you wish that you would have drilled a well instead? Yeah. What's your like 20 second answer to that? No, because two things. One, wells take a lot of power, yep. which we don't have because we're off grid, and they're normally on demand, which means on demand power. Well, which you we still don't need have. to figure out a way to get it from the backs of the property to here. So basically, all this would have to be done in addition to the well. Only the well alone would potentially cost us 30 grand. I mean, there's probably a minimum a well would cost you, but no maximum. Yeah, we have no idea and, how much a well would actually and cost. And really no guarantee of water. 
Right. So this is part of our well system strategy. This yep. is part of the strategy. And we feel like if more people knew that the power was going to go out and they would lose both power and water at the same time, they would build a system like this. Because even if we can't get water out of the well, we're good for two to three months. In fact, we have plans down the road to add rainwater harvesting to our strategy. We've actually buried two sets of lines from the top of the hill and we have another cistern that we hope to put in there that we'll use for rainwater. And yep. we can use that uh, for a lot of things like garden hot tub or even gray water use or you know things like you know washing dishes or not washing dishes but taking a shower stuff like that mm -hmm. that's not critical that it be drinkable water just to help us validate we actually ran an interim system I won't go into depth on that we actually did a video on it we'll link to that over here up at the top of the hill is a 625 gallon poly tank above ground and we have a PVC line the reason we did PVC not PEX is because of budget hindsight we probably would have laid PEX but we didn't have the funds at the time because everything around here costs a lot of money then we have a spigot here we run the hose down to the RV we did that to validate the system and I can say wholeheartedly works great so that leaves us with the cisterns. So let's go to the top of the hill and take a look at how that's all arranged. We made it to the top. We made the treacherous trek yeah. and things look about how we left them. Yay. So down in this precarious hole, you know, it's actually better than it looks. It does look better from this angle. Yeah, it does. The other side looks pretty bad. So, we all have an angle we look better from. Oh, so these are our cisterns. We have two 1060 gallon infiltrator direct berry cisterns and one will be the master, the other will be the slave and they're going to be connected on the bottom so that they act as one large cistern. So then we're going to have a ball valve down here that will be the main shutoff and that's where that gigantic piece of pipe that I showed you earlier will go eight oh, feet yep. down and there'll be a ball valve down there. Then come over here. And the fill line is also going to come up here, enter the tank at the bottom, and then it's going to have a riser inside the tank that comes up near the top, and then there'll be an aerator on the top. And that'll help to increase the water quality by putting a little bit of oxygen in the water as it fills up. Why are we not bringing the fill line in the top? Because that would bring the fill line too close to the surface of the ground and make it subject to freezing. So it's going to come in the bottom where it's buried substantially and come up so the only time it would be subject to freezing is when we're actually filling the tank but these tanks are over two feet down below ground so shouldn't have any problems with freezing i'm not looking forward to pulling all these boulders out of here over the next day or two and you know what i'm also not looking forward to see that ladder holding up that boulder i'm not moving that ladder nose goes <laughs> what the heck so you can see that our soil is extremely rocky and over winter, we had one of the harshest winters in roughly 20 years. And the spring runoff, plus all the rain and all the stuff has made this stuff slough off. So now we've got all these wonderful rocks again in the bottom. And we're gonna have to fish some of those out so that we can get the water line in here. And then we also wanna bed these cisterns. And by bed, I mean backfill on the side with sand. So get rid of all those rocks down there. If you're thinking to yourself, this system seems complex. We put a lot of work into simplify, simplifying yep. it. I would say that our first system was complex. And budget will dictate a lot of the things that you do. So for example, we started out with like a three inch main line. Ha! That wasn't gonna work. Yeah. So we've ended up uh, going down to a two inch main line. And then we had a whole bunch of connections. Remember that we had all these T's and all these things coming off of it. And in the end, we're only going to have one connection mm -hmm. on that hose. And that's a saddle T that will connect to the garden and to the deck and RV. I think there's still a chance it's over designed, but we'd rather over design than under design. So I think in the end, we'll be able to tell you if we could have done without anything. The problem is everything is subjective. So you'll get people who will say, polys are junk, poly valves are junk, when they had a bad poly valve. Yep. And people will tell you brass valves are junk because they had a brass valve that was junk. So it's really just a matter of opinion on a lot of this stuff. And my confident feeling is that they would not be selling these materials to yep. uh, municipal water works if they weren't a quality product. And hiding behind Alyssa, you can see our current hilltop cistern. So there's been a lot of forethought, probably over a year of thinking on this system. And is this going to work for everybody? No, because, well, it's just unique to our situation. So apparently whatever we ate for dinner makes us taste extremely scrumptious to mosquitoes because we're getting eaten alive. 
So that's our water system. We hope to do a video later after we get everything plumbed in and connected, but we wanted to do this now because we're about to bury everything and there's no chance we're gonna do video as we're going. It's gonna be all work and no play. We'll get footage, we're just not gonna do like video. video. Yes, so now you have a high level overview of what the system looks like. We've got some other chores we gotta get done and we gotta sleep because tomorrow is gonna be ridiculously hard. Yes, what Jesse said. 